Hi, Harvey. Hi, Olivia. Right, everyone, I do apologise if I don't say hello to any more people now. As during the lesson, as I've just seen Madison has popped into the chat, I won't be looking at his drawing the lesson because I need to concentrate on what I'm going to be doing in today's session. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to pop back over to my software. I'm going to make myself a little bit smaller so I'm able to share my screen with you. As I've said before to any of you very tech savvy children out there, this is software called OBS, OBS and lots of game streamers like to use this to share the games and show you how to play the different games on the different websites. So that's the software I'm using. So I'm going to show you now this post in particular for mums and dads if you are there at the moment. I organize this status every morning. It goes up about eight o'clock. I've made some changes to what we've done based on feedback. So it gives you a breakdown of the morning. Next week, we also have some sessions going live during the afternoon. So there'll be more details to follow in regards to that. What we have added are any links to any resources that we might be using in the lesson that you'll need after the lesson. These resources are there so you can find them nice and easily. I'm also putting them in the title of the video on the Facebook live stream. And if you're watching on YouTube, it will be in the comments down below. Now, on this post as well, we have some frequently asked questions. And in regards to the resources links that I put there, we are aiming to make our lessons printer free wherever possible. We do recommend, and maybe for today's lesson, it might be useful just for a few notes for yourself if I'm asking questions, boys and girls, that you have got a pencil or a pen, something to write with, and a piece of paper or something similar so you can make little marks and notes down on it. There's not going to be a lot of writing, it's very much a little bit more practical with the sessions where I can do them like that. So, any questions, feel free to ask in the chat. If you aren't sure and you need more and your questions are not answered through, through these frequently asked questions, do comment on this thread as between half past eight and eleven thirty we add an authorizing the post just to make it easier for everyone to find the live streams of the lessons. Next thing, the Twinkle uh, main page. I want to talk about the Home Learning Hub. There's a link on nearly every web page on the site. But the Home Learning Hub is a place for everyone to find content for any age that you are. So obviously I'm in my lessons to be between 9 to 11 years old for today. It's not to say if you're younger you can't join in, you just might need a little bit more help from mums and dads. But those who are at 9 and 11, it has a breakdown of all sorts of activities you can be doing during today's, during the daily session. So here we are with some of the mass activities and ideas that we could do. Now on there it says we are supposed to be doing measurement today. Now, this is why I brought it to everyone's attention. There was a little bit of confusion in regards to the home learning hub and the live lessons in that it was a lovely idea and the project has got so popular that we've had to, we're trying to push out as much content to meet as many people's needs as possible. The Home Learning Hub and myself and everyone who are doing the live lessons, we've been working ever so hard to make sure we make sure that everything shown in all the right places is always the same. But as we're all working remotely now, none of us are in the office, it's been a bit of a, a bit of a challenge. So next week, all the Home Learning Hub content will be accurately reflected in the live lessons taking place on the Twinkle Parents Group. So I apologise if there's any miscommunication or any misunderstanding there. But if you want more ideas, alternative ideas, any day, you will be able to use Home Learning Hub and it has a few days scheduled ahead in advance if you want to get prepared. So next week, the Home Learning Hub will accurately reflect all the lessons we're doing. Any past broadcast can be found on the Twinkle Kids TV channel, including the Key Stage 2 lessons. They are all being uploaded. So, for today's lesson, first of all, we're going to be talking about 3D shapes. So I just want to recap some of the 3D shapes shown in one of the resources that was available to download. So here we've got a list of a number of 3D shapes. Just want to have a little bit of a talk through them and have a look at what they are. So, as we can see to start with, I'm sure you'll be able to name quite a number of these yourself, but we'll go through them very quickly. So the first one we've got is the sphere, 
obviously a round ball shape it's sometimes quite difficult to accurately represent 3d shapes through a 2d image but i'm sure you can get the idea of the sort of shape they are next we've got our cube we've got our pyramid our cuboid cylinder the triangular prism and the cone we will be moving on to more of these but in particular we're going to talk today about some of the properties of those shapes we're going to be covering the edges the faces the vertices if they're flat and curved and identifying and classifying the 3d shapes based on their properties because there are a great number of 3d shapes and they will be all around you all objects are in some way a 3d shape if not a, a collection of 3d shapes put together that is how the world around us is formed and shaped so let me first of all bring you back to my screen so you've got myself so first thing we're going to do just for today's session is i'm going to just show you one object and we're just going to talk about some of the properties how to identify them and what their names are the terminology we will be using the first thing i've got nice and simple one got myself a box it's a cereal box so it's actually empty now i finished it this morning but first of all looking at it obviously it's not in front of you you cannot hold this one yourself could you please identify this 3d shape what is it called So you've got to work this out already, you might have done so already. But this shape is a cuboid. So zero box is our cuboid shape, cuboid shape, and we're going to talk about the different properties we will find in our 3D shape. First things first, we're going to talk about the surfaces. The surfaces, each part of the shape has a surface. Each shape has at least one surface. So the cuboid in particular, I'm going to hold it still as I do this, but I'm going to try and do it on an angle so I can kind of show as many of the faces as I can at one go. So I'm just going to try and angle it. There we are. We'll hold it there. So we've got one face here. We've got another one at the top, so two. We've got three, four underneath, five at the other side here, and one at the back. So we've got one, two, Three, four, five, six faces for a cuboid. There are other shapes that have six faces. One would be a cube, but even though they have the same number of faces, the three, two 3D shapes are different. They still have different properties. The next thing we're going to talk about are the edges. There's usually quite a few of these. So again, I'm going to hold this at an angle and just work out how to do this with the camera. That looks okay, I think. So we talked about the faces at the sides. We're now going to talk about the edges, the point in which a face meets another face. So here's one here, edge running down. Let me do it on this side. You see all the way, this is the shape here, running all the way down between this face and this face here. So we've got another edge here. We've got another one going down here, and we've got another one going across here. We have got, indeed, we have got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve edges. Twelve edges to this shape. Once again, there are shapes that have the same number of faces and have the same number of edges but once again some of their properties are different i'll come on to that in a moment but i don't want to give that answer away i'd rather you have a think about why they're different or why they're classified differently the last bit i'm going to talk about the vertices you might call them something else but the correct terminology when we're talking about 3d shapes is vertices and this is one for example it's where the point in which the edges meet. Some people tend to call them corners, but when we speak of corners, we're speaking about the properties of a 2D shape. As this is a 3D shape, it's called a vertice. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight vertices. So 
and put this to the side, and I'm just going to share my screen with you again. I'm just going to ask you to ponder that question I shared before. You may have already got the answers, and if you are commenting in the chat any of the answers, can we please ask that you only do it once to give other people the chance to enjoy the session and think of the answers themselves. So, this is our 3D shapes uh, properties chart. We have got two shapes, one above the other. We were talking about the cuboid, and ironically, I did one that was the same colour. So, we were looking at the cuboid. Just above that is the cube. As you can see, the blue cube just here. The properties are the same. It has six surfaces, and I should have mentioned, but they are all flat. We have six, sorry, 12 edges. And again, they're all flat edges. And it has eight vertices. They both do. So why is the cube and the cuboid different? It's a question I'm going to ask. I'll come back to that in a little while. But just have a little question. Why are they different? Why are they classified differently? There are certain properties that you need to think of. Now, for the next part of our activity, I'm going to hop back to myself. It's a little task that I'm going to need everyone to do. I'm going to need everyone to be sensible with this task as well, of course. It goes without saying, really. But I need boys and girls to go and collect some 3D shapes from around the room they're in, or maybe the house. We'll give them a few moments when I finish speaking. Now, before you go and run off and start picking up anything you can see, First of all, I want you to think very carefully about the objects you're going to choose. Are they a sensible object for you to be picking up? Is it safe? Is it delicate? Are you allowed to be picking it up, please? Just consider those things before you choose your objects. Make sure they're small enough so you can handle them and you can evaluate them, look around all the different properties carefully and count them and classify them. But... Make sure they're not too big that you're going to have too much difficulty trying to go through them. What I would like you to do is to do something similar to what we're going to do collectively afterwards. We're going to, first of all, identify what the shape might be. I want you to think about how many surfaces it has and if they're flat or curved. I want you to think about how many edges there are for any of these particular shapes you find and how many vertices there are in your shape. So what I'm doing a couple already. I'm going to see if I can find any more where I am in my house. I'm going to say about two minutes now, everyone. Try and find a small collection of objects, maybe no more than five, just so we can go through and classify some of these um, shapes, 3D shapes, and identify the different properties they have and how we can group those together. Off you go, everyone. Let me have a look. And that one's okay. Mm -hmm. One more minute, everyone, if you are still looking for any 3D resources, and then we'll come back together. A few more seconds, everybody. 
and they will all come back together. I'm glad to see that some people have found. I'm glad to see that some people have gone and found some of the things that we need. So that people have found lots more excellent work. Right, time to come back together. Right, everybody. So, hopefully you've had a chance to go and find some 3D shapes around your home. So the first thing we're going to do is I'm going to ask you to choose one of those objects. Once you've chosen one of those objects, I want you to have a go at, first of all, naming the name of the 3D shape. So, here's mine, the first one I'm going to look at. It is a tin of beans. The shape, I'm not going to write tin of beans. I'm going to have to use something a little bit more mathematical than that. This is, of course, a cylinder. I'm going to make sure that I'm spelling cylinder correctly. I'm going to consider how many surfaces the cylinder has. So it's got one, two flat surfaces and one curved surface. So all together, um, curved surface, yes, all together it has three surfaces. Have a go at choosing one of your objects now and just work out how many surfaces your object has. Now, I'm going to try and go a little bit quicker in some parts of the lesson, but if we are taking a little bit of time on certain parts and you're waiting, I do apologise, but normally when I was in teaching in a classroom, I had children in front of me, and I would see who was finished and who was still needing time to do their work. As I can't see that anymore, I'm having to guess how long you might need, so I apologise if I'm having to keep you waiting. If you are all ready to do, ready to do the next few steps, Move on to the next 3JD object. You do not have to wait for me to go and walk you through each and every step if you think you can do it on your own. I'm going to move on to the number of edges. So in the cylinder, I've got one edge there, one continuous edge, and another one just there. So I've got the two all together, and they, of course, are curved. And the last question will be, how many vertices does it have? None. None of my edges meet anywhere on the cylinder so it has no vertices. Right, one minute everyone, have a go at choosing one of your 3D shapes now. If you have run out of 3D shapes and you are still needing to choose some objects to work out their properties, I will show you one of mine and you can check your answers with mine when we go through it all together in a minute or so. And this is the next object. Right, sure, it's a tennis ball, and it's one of my dog's tennis balls. So that's going to be your object. Have a think about classifying and doing its properties, please, if you would. Right, I'm going to go through the properties of the sphere I have got here. So I've already given away one of the answers, which is the name of it. Nice and easy. Spelt strange, you know. So we're going to look at the sphere now. Next, how many surfaces does the sphere have? It's all one continuous surface. And it's not flat, of course, it is curved. So just the one. Next, how many edges does the uh, sphere have? No, absolutely none. It's perfectly round the entirety of the shape. And once again, as it has no edges, it cannot have 
any vertices because there is no point in which the edges meet. So again, zero. If you've got that yourself, fantastic. Give everyone another one to do if you have the amount of objects or you've done your own. As I've seen in the chat, because I am keeping an eye on the chat from time to time, please make sure if you have run out of shapes, you can do mine. If you want to give out answers, that is okay. But can I please ask you, do not keep typing comments over and over and over again, as it does spoil the experience for some other people who are wanting to enjoy the lesson and take part in it, please. So, if you need help, that is fine. If you want to give an answer, that is fine as well. But please do not keep posting comment after comment after comment. It makes it very hard for people who are trying to help, to help people. Last one now that I'm going to share with you. Feels like it might have melted ever so slightly. See if you can identify what the name of the shape is and what its properties are, please. Change the angle in case you see it with ease. And I'd just like to say, I accept everyone who may be apologising if they've been doing some of those things in the chat that I've just mentioned. It's okay, please don't worry about it anymore. We just want you all to enjoy and all be able to answer and take turns. That is all. Excellent, I can see some people have already got the answers right to the name of the shape. So next, I'm going to have a go at doing something I haven't done so far which is I'm going to ask questions and wait and see if I can see answers in the chat. New territory for me, boys and girls. So we're going to ask, first of all, of course, how many surfaces does the cone have? How many surfaces does the cone have? Hmm. I think someone's commenting about their keyword having six. That's great. It's a cone. Well done. Can anyone tell me how many surfaces the cone has? I do apologise if you hear my dog barking in the background. I think that might be something to do with the fact that the postman's coming. So. Let me go through the properties then, because I can't see the comments coming through. So for the cone, it has two surfaces, one at the front here, and one continuous surface all around here. So it has one flat and one curved surface. Before we continue, I'm going to say hello to my dog, make sure he's okay, and I might see if he wants to come and join us for two moments. I do excuse me, everyone. Oh, come on, Frank. Let's tell the boys and girls what has been happening. So sorry to detract from the lesson, but Frank was not very happy as there was a cat sitting on the window staring at him through the window. He's not a fan of cats. So let's move on to how many edges does the cone have? Frank cannot have the pen. Where is the cone? Cone, cone, cone. There it is. Right. How many edges does it have? It just has the one running around the top of the flat edge. One edge. How many vertices does it have? Remember, I might have been inclined at one point to say, well, it's got one just here at the top. Can you see that? Let me check my camera. Hmm, you can see it there. That is not a vertice. It is not a vertice because this is not a point in which other edges meet. There's only one edge, so there's not a possibility of having two edges in order then for, the, for them to meet. So the answer is zero. Last thing I'm going to do before we finish today's session is I'm just going to make my camera a bit smaller, if it's going to work, there we go, and take us all back to the question I asked earlier and just see if anybody's managed to work it out. So I was talking about the fact that the cube and the cuboid have the same properties, the numbers of, of surfaces, edges and vertices, but they are classified differently. I want to see if anybody 
has worked out why. Why are they different? Just going to wait and see if you can see the answers. Mm hmm. They are different, our cube and a cuboid, mainly due to the fact of the size of the surfaces you can see. On the cube, all the surfaces are square shaped and they're all equal in size. On a cuboid, you have two faces, usually at the top, that are different sizes. Maybe different side shape sizes, sorry, different side faces at the sides and different side faces once again at the other sides. So as all the faces are not equal, it is classified as a cuboid. So one more thing to do with the lesson to go through. Give an answer away then. So just to recap, see if you have picked anything up from today's lesson. First question is, what is the name of this shape? Pause, I'm sure you'll be able to guess after we've just had that conversation, it's called a cuboid. Another question to get you to think, I want you to think about why, which shape is the odd one out? Why is one of these the odd one out? Think about the properties that these different shapes possess. Well done to you if you've got the answer correct. Well, the difference is this cylinder. It's the only shape with a curved surface and curved edges. But I'm sure you could think of some other answers as to which one may be an odd one out. So once again, how many vertices does this shape have? Might have to visualise it as we do not have the cube, the cube shape in front of us. It has eight vertices. You can see four of them here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And the other one is at the back corner that we can't see because we can't see through the cube shape. These two shapes have the same amount of vertices. Is that true or false? You should know the answer given the question I posed earlier. Of course, it's true. The cube and the cuboid have the same properties but they're classified differently due to the fact that the cube has equal faces in terms of size and the cuboid has different sized faces. How many surfaces does the sphere have? Just the one, one continuous surface around the entirety of it. And the last one that we're going to do because I want to finish today's session is this shape has two surfaces. Is that true? Or false? It of course is true. It has the one flat surface that we spoke of before and the one continuous curved first surface around the neck of the cone. So I hope you have enjoyed today's math session. I'm sorry if parts of it were a little bit slow. As I say, it's very hard to judge no longer being in a classroom and having students in front of me. There are lots of activities on the Twinkle website you have access to. There's all the interactive games on Twinkle. Go have an explore and see what you can find that you are interested in if you are looking for different things to do. And don't forget about the home learning hub as well. So we'll be back this time next week for our upper key stage two maths lesson. I will be making sure that what is on the Home Learning Hub is accurately represented in the lesson. So until next week, I'm going to say goodbye and see you later, everyone. Thank you very much.